Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? I, uh, this is Becky with Silhouette Life Inspiration Box. And I won't dive in too deep just yet. We're going to give everybody time to join. But tonight we are going to be talking about fonts, all about fonts, all the fun things you can do with fonts and how to get fonts to do what you want them to do. So um, give me a few minutes. I'm still getting everything set up. Uh, not as far as you guys can tell, but I want to um, get the comments pulled up. That way, when you guys ask questions, because I just know tonight is the night, you guys are going to have some questions, and I want to be ready. So. so I'm going to get it pulled up on the phone, and I'll try to go back and forth a little bit, but sometimes, uh, sometimes I get stuck just on one page. So if for some reason you have questions and I don't answer right away, then please um, know that I will come back and check these videos and make sure that um, that your questions are answered. So two more seconds. Promise I'm going to start. Promise, promise, promise. You know, and if you're here already, feel free to say hi. I see I've got uh, 16 of you watching now. We're making some progress. Um, if you if you joined me on Monday, we did this um, for Cricut users, and Cricut users have a little bit harder of a time, so you know we have to forgive them a little bit. Uh, but I say that because if you are a Cricut user, then um, you can still watch today, but it may be more beneficial for you to jump over and watch Monday's post. So, all right, the things that we are going to talk about today are um, how to install fonts after you download them because you know there's a ton of resources um, I've been grabbing the free fonts from craft chameleon lately uh, you get a free font every two weeks so that's pretty exciting make sure you sign up for their newsletter um, and then after you download them sometimes there can be some confusion on what to do so we'll talk about that we'll talk about how to get them in silhouette studio um, working with them in Silhouette Studio, you know, as far as where you select them and the different things you can do. And we will talk about working with glyphs. Okay. If you don't know what a glyph is, you are in the right place. All right. Let's get started. So when we start talking about downloading fonts, okay, obviously, you know, all your system fonts are going to um, automatically be here, populate here when you first started with Silhouette Studio. But let's talk about when you download. Okay. When you download fonts, they come and usually they come in these zipped um, folders, right? And that's okay because you can double click and you can install from here. Okay. So now, also, let me back up before I get too far. If you are using a Mac, I'm sorry that this part is not for you. I do have resources to show you how to do it on a Mac, but I personally do not have a Mac. I'm working on a PC. So just one little difference. So as long as you're on a PC, let's keep going. So you can, I always stick with the open type font. Um, I've heard or read rather that they are more compatible um, with most of the softwares that we're using, like different graphic design softwares. Uh, sometimes you don't have an option and you, you go with true type font. I really haven't noticed that big of a difference um, in terms of silhouette. So you can double click and it will give you a preview of what the font looks like, right? Now, if you've downloaded the font, typically speaking, this preview isn't really going to do that much for you. But this is where you can hit install right up here. And I've already got this one installed, so it's going to tell me, hey, do you really want to do this? I'm just going to hit no, but you would hit yes at this point, or you would, it should do it automatically, and it should install it on your computer. Okay, now, the reason that I wanted to bring you here to show you this folder, and this is just my downloads folder, this isn't anything special, but I wanted to show you that if you have multiple fonts that you uh, have downloaded all at the same time, you can select them all. And if I right click, I can hit install and it will install them all at the same time. 
Now that's useful, especially if you've downloaded any bundles or anything like that. It's also useful if you're moving fonts from one computer to another. You can put them all on a flash drive and install them uh, all at one time. So, uh, you know, it just saves you a couple steps because the next part we're going to talk about to get those into Silhouette Studio, um, it Silhouette Studio will automatically bring those in, but you have to restart your software after you have installed the font. So a lot of a lot of times I just leave my software up in the background. So if I'm going to go through and save all of my files that I'm working on and shut down my software, I make it worth my while. So then I will. Um, go ahead and, and install all the fonts rather than just installing one. Okay. So that was a real quick, uh, quick and easy version of how to install them because it's super easy and then how to get them in Silhouette Studio. You just have to restart the software. Okay. Once they are in Silhouette Studio, you have two different text uh, buttons to look at. This over here is if you want to create text. And over here on this side is to modify the text after, oh bless you, after you have created it. Okay, so all you have to do is click on the text that you want to use. Okay, now that can be tiresome once you get a lot of fonts accumulated. So if you don't already know, I want to show you it's a pretty cool website. And I think this has made its round. So, you know, some of you guys might not be wild about it, but it's um, word mark M A R K dot it. Word mark it. Okay. And I'm kind of funny about the way that my bees display. So sometimes I come in here and I check what all my different fonts are going to look like if it's a particular word that I'm looking for, because not, not all fonts are created equal and not all letters in a certain font are going to be uh, what you're looking for. So that's how you do that. And then the real easy part, in my opinion, is that I can, okay, so say, let's go down to the bottom. That'll make more sense. Say I really, I say the bottom, I'm only to the B's, aren't I? Say I just love this font. This is an easy one. It's called bunny ears, but I can highlight that and copy it. And the reason I would do that is when I come back over here in Silhouette Studio, I can paste that name into my text or my font names up here, and it'll go straight to the font that I decided that I liked instead of me either thumbing down through all the names or me trying to remember and get the right spelling. Cause some of these font names can be kind of tricky. So, all right, I'm gonna take a breath for a minute. I've been on the Silhouette Life page. I'm gonna hop over to Craft Chameleon because I know a lot of you ladies are over there. So I'm just going to see if you had anything. Oh, I see Jamie, Chastity, Chastity. Okay, Norma, okay. All right, so you guys are more active, so I'm gonna hang out here for a little while on the Craft Chameleon page. So like I said, if you got questions, feel free to ask them. Here comes the really fun part. Let's talk about fonts with glyphs. Okay, glyphs are special characters that are built or programmed in with the font to either give you extras that you can use or enhance the font that you're working with, okay? So for example, um, there's one that I really like and I use it a lot in these types of, of classes, okay? Now this font, yeah, I mean, I use it anyway because it's a bold script font and um, it cuts better, you know, sometimes than the thin script fonts, depending on what you're working with. So keep that in mind when you're looking at script fonts. These bold script fonts are, are really good to have in your arsenal. But what I want to show you, and I believe that this is going to be designer edition and higher, there's this glyphs panel. And the reason that this is so important is that you can clearly get a preview 
of all of the uh, extra features that come with your font. Okay, uh, let me scroll down. This one takes a minute to load because it has so many cool features in it. Okay, this one in particular, let's get a good letter. Let's go back up to the B's. They're here somewhere. Okay, so this one, I wanna use my name, of course, because why would I not wanna use my name? I'm gonna get there eventually. Okay, here we go. So I can select my glyph. Whoa, all right, so that one came over really big. Scale it down a little. All right. So all I did was click on my glyph and it inserted it, right? So I can finish typing out my word and boom. So, um, all right, question real quick. I see, okay, so chastity is, let me see, the name of it is, I always call it Bohemian script, that's not it, it's actually B-O-H-E-M-A. Um, I bought it, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember where I bought it, but I've had it for probably like a year. So it's gotta still be floating around there somewhere. Uh, and Leslie, yes, yeah, so you can watch either one. So I'm doing a, like a simultaneous casting. You can watch here on Craft Chameleon. You can watch over here on Silhouette Life Inspiration Box. It's gonna be the same video either way. I just, you know, I'm kind of double dipping here. I want you all to get the most uh, goodness that you can out of these fonts, especially when it comes to glyphs. So in addition to these special characters, you also get fonts. Let me see if this one has any. A lot of times they're all the way down at the bottom. No, this isn't going to be one of them. But you also get fonts that when we start talking about, OK, we were looking at the Hello font, right? Especially Hello in particular. And then maybe, maybe it's just me, but I hate, 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 hate when the two L's look the same or the two T's look the same. Okay. Sometimes, uh, let me see, what would be a good, what's a good one? Give me a second. I'm going to find it. Maybe this one. Let's see. Okay, this is a good example. So let me show you side by side. This is such a small thing to be obsessed with, but I totally am. Instead of the two L's that look identical, all right, I can take those out and this font gives me a double L. Okay, and the reason that you would care about this is because it makes it look more like a handwritten font or a hand lettered font the same thing with um, r's s's t's are another big one like when i type out silhouette it just bugs the crap out of me to have those two t's right there so anytime i have the opportunity i will come in and look for a t that has the uh the combined T's together. And more and more fonts seem to be coming out like this. And that's really exciting for me personally. Um, but I do also want to show you a trick. What font was I working with the other day? And this gets a little bit more into editing. And we are going to come back. Um, no. So when we're talking about the two T's, if I'm working with a font that perhaps doesn't have um, the double T and it really bothers me, I will space it out. Oops, I'm trying to get behind that T. Oh. Okay, there we go. I will type out another T. And then this is where my knife tool really comes in handy. And I will zoom in on that bad boy right there. I'm going to slice it like that. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Well, if I can get it. There we go. Okay. And then 
I can delete those off of there and make my own double T. And it may not be ideal, but it is sure, in my opinion, a heck of a lot better than um, than what I had to begin with. Because sometimes those the T's just don't don't work well together. And uh, like I said, you'll find it with specifically R's, S's, T's, um, O's, L's, those types of things. So just kind of throwing that out there. Oh, can't forget me. There we go. All right. So when we're working with script fonts, we also have to remember to weld. We absolutely want to weld. And the reason why, and let me show you if I don't have this filled in. Okay, so I want all of these letters connected, right? And when it's filled in with black, it's easy to forget that these letters are cutting into each other. So if I forget to weld, and when I mean weld, I can right click and just choose weld, and it will, uh, it welds them together. But it basically makes it to where it's one continuous word and not individual letters that are going to um, instead of going to cut into each other. All right, really good question. Um, instead of cutting off the arms to the T, could I have used an L? Yes, as long as it wasn't an L that had a loop to it. So for example, this T, if I used an L, it would have had this loop on it. Okay, so yes, definitely don't feel like you have to recreate the wheel on that one. So, okay. Let's also talk about if you do not have Designer Edition and you're on PC, because then you won't have this really nifty glyphs over here. And the reason that that is a big deal, I mean, to me, that's worth the upgrade all by itself. But um, because then you guys have to use the character map. If you have not used a character map before, all I did was search for it down here in my search bar. This is what you, this is the size of the preview that you get. So for the same font that I was already working with, all right, and I'm going to go to group by. A lot of times your special characters will be in that Unicode subrange, and you can scroll all the way down to the private use characters. And see that kind of gets me down there to where I need to be. Okay, but that is the size of my preview, which if I already knew kind of what I was looking for, that might be okay. But let's see, let's get back to there's my B. All right. So what I would do is I would click on that and I would choose select right here. And it puts it over here in this little box and then I can copy it. Okay, now when I click back over to Silhouette Studio, I'm going to create a new box. And I will use control V to paste. Now you noticed I got a box. Now obviously that is very disappointing because a box was not the purpose of me going through all that trouble, right? But if I change the name of the font to match, that's where it kicks in. So, um, you know, if you're in a situation where you're using the character map and you come over and you paste your special character and you get that box, well, that's what's going on is that you have to come over here and update um, this, the font name over here. Yeah, so to pull up the character map, I'm on Windows 10, and I believe we all have this search bar here. You can just type in character map, and it will open it up. It's a, a native app that should be on all um, Windows PCs. Okay, so we talked about glyphs a little bit. We talked about editing, um, kind of making your own glyphs. Another thing that I like to do is I'm a real big fan of when the H's have the little extra over here on the side. So sometimes I'll modify that by hand if the font I'm working with doesn't have one already. What else do we need to talk about in terms of fonts? Do you guys have any questions so far? 
Oh, Linda, you have a Mac. I'm sorry. No, I'm not really sorry. I hear Macs are really good, but you know, I, I had to go out on a limb and buy an iPad and me and that iPad are not compatible. So I'm just not sure that, um, I'm not sure that, that, uh, Apple computer is in my future. Um, I have not seen two versions of the character map, but I can tell you, here's another little gem. If you do not want to update, here we go. There's a software that I used to use. Um, it's called main, M-A-I-N-T-Y-P-E. And it's this company here by HiLogic. And it is a font managing software. Okay, and here we go. This is a preview of what it looks like. Basically, it picks up on all the fonts that you have installed and it gives you the preview here, but these are the size of your uh, previews. So definitely much better than the native character map. And another reason to use it, even if you do have the designer edition and you don't need the, the larger previews, main type will help you sort your fonts. So you can sort them and categorize them by commercial use, personal use, script fonts, uh, you know, retro fonts. Uh, if you have a favorite designer, um, you know, like you could keep all your craft chameleon fonts in one place. There's just a lot of different ways that you could go in here and keep all your fonts organized if that's a thing. Um, so I will say, Linda, that what you're looking for is your font book. And I think you have a, a, a similar search area. You can type in font book and select the font that you're working with. And you can also see all your special characters um, that way. So, all right, bear with me. Jumping back over. I don't want to miss anybody's comments or questions. Do, 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 do. Okay, nope, no questions. Okay, so let's recap. We talked about downloading and installing the font, super easy. We talked about getting the font in Silhouette Studio, again, super easy. Working with glyphs, you guys kind of saw that. Um, what else? Main type we covered, character map we covered. I think you guys have exhausted my font knowledge. I feel like I'm missing something. Let me see. Oh, I am. I am missing something. Let me. So we were talking about the glyphs. Let me get all this madness out of the way. Okay. And glyphs are really exciting, but sometimes, all right, and, and this kind of verges into using dingbat fonts. Okay. But a lot of times, I have this one in particular, you can find font duos that work together. So. Like this one is called Falling Leaves. And it has all these different items that I can use here. Now, sometimes they'll be broken out like this where it will show up as an extras font or a different font. And sometimes they will be built into the fonts and you'll have to go find them. Um, and then also too, sometimes when you have a font duo and one that snuck up on me, okay, because you can do the bold. Oh, well, maybe that wasn't the one I was thinking of. Oh, I know what it is. This butterfly font is one that I used to use all the time. And if you select down, Oh, don't make me a liar. Let me show the nice people. All right. You get narrow, smooth. This one's called swashes. Okay. And it, um, I can find those in the character map too. Let's see. Where are you? They're probably all the way at the bottom. 
No, they're making me a liar again. Anyway, but you can, um, sometimes if you're looking for something in particular, there we go, A, B, C. Okay, so it can be hiding not just in your little glyph menu, but you might have to use that little drop down menu to find um, the different characters. Okay, now part of the reason why it's important to learn about all the different characters that come with your fonts, and can I remember what font I used for this? Maybe, maybe not. I do think it was this one. Okay. All right, so this is, is a little character that's often ignored, but when I was playing with this other font the other day, let me go back to it now that I clicked off of it. There we go. You see how I got kind of like a, a rounded instead of the, the clipped ends? Okay, now let me show you what I did with that, if I can find it. What month are we in? April. I did my little file here. So if I put them side by side, does that look familiar? Okay, so sometimes, you know, what you're looking for instead of me having to figure out how to draw that or how to make that um, myself, then it was, it was right there as part of the font. And because this is a font that I've paid for commercial use, well, then it's right there for me to use, right? Okay, so uh, I see we have lots of chatter. Okay, so you have a Cricut, get a silhouette. Copy and paste the glyph in the Cricut. It's going to be the same character map. And we just did it. I did a video on that on Monday. I talked about using fonts because I also showed, you know, how I was using the knife tool to separate the different pieces. You guys have the slice feature in Cricut. So everything that I've covered here, I covered in design space um, on Monday. So go back on the Craft Chameleon page and uh, look for Monday's video. Okay, so Julie, thanks for joining us. You have missing fonts that are missing from your new computer. How do I move my old fonts to the new computer? Will it duplicate things or not? Okay, so the good news is if you're moving a font that is already installed on your computer, it is not going to duplicate. It'll just tell you, hey, you've already got this font on here. Do you want to replace it or do you want to stop? Okay, so that's what you can do is you can go to your old computer and you have a fonts folder. If I, I, Julie, I hope you're working on PC. If I search for fonts, uh, where are you? Fonts, fonts, fonts. Maybe this is what it's called now, font settings. You know, they're always changing things. <sighs> okay. So I think... No. Anyway, there is a font folder somewhere, and I can look for it and help you, Julie, if you need me to. You can go on your old computer, and you can find that font folder, and you can, just like um, Chastity was saying, you can put them on a jump drive and bring them over to your new computer and just reinstall them. So hopefully that'll help. Okay, so a waving eyebrow. Linda, you crack me up. That is exactly, I, you know, I think next time I'm going to have to use it when I'm trying to make eyebrows. So, uh, oh, Brooke has a question. I'm sorry. I missed it. Let me see. Oh, it won't let me go up that far. I'm sorry. Let me try to load it again. No, I, I think because I've clicked out of it and came back in. I can see the question now. If you want to ask again, um, I'll pay attention this time, uh, or I will go back and answer it at the end of the video. Whatever is easiest for you, Brooke, and I'm really sorry that I missed your question. 
Um, okay, so I I think that's it. I think you guys have exhausted my knowledge. Okay, okay, Brooke's question. Some of my fonts with fun glyphs used to show in my font list, but they no longer do any ideas. Okay, so Brooke, can you tell me, do the fonts not show at all, or just the special characters don't show on your list? Um, there, there was this thing that happened and I can't remember if it was just new, newly installed fonts, but uh, if you want to send me a PM, I will send it to you. But there's instructions out. People were saying that their their fonts were installing and or they were disappearing. Just the special characters. Huh. Well, let me continue this thought real quick. So the problem with installing is Windows went through this period of time where you had to go in and reinstall fonts that were under like install for all users. Um, so that was a thing. So if you're having problems with that, uh, actually post, instead of sending me a PM, post in the uh, craft community group and I'll post back with the information. That way, if you're not the only one with that question, everybody can see it. But so just your special characters disappeared. Hmm. 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 I'll be honest with you. I've not experienced that one yet, but if you would like Brooke, send me a PM with the name of the font or give me a font example and I will install it and see if I can locate them on my own computer. Maybe they're um, just in hiding somewhere. Uh, sometimes they, they do that. And, and I really feel like every time, you know, windows updates, <laughs> I feel like I lose sight of something else. So, you know, it's, it's all, it's all kind of a, a game we like to play. Okay. So I think that's all I got. Oh, oh, you gave me the name. Oh, the font is Hawaiian pizza. Okay. So I, I'm going to write that down right now. Hawaiian pizza. I haven't heard of that one. I hope it's fun. It sounds, I hope it's as fun as it sounds. H A W A I I A N pizza font. I'm gonna go ahead and write down your name because I'm gonna forget. Brooke. All right, sweet. All right. Well, if you have any more questions or if you think of any font related questions later, definitely um, come back. Actually, Chastity, I think, well, Jamie will have to tell me. Jamie did a file that I actually prefer over this one, but I think hers was sublimation. Um, I can't remember. But I'm definitely willing to send it to you if you want. Um, I, I do have it for sale, but... I don't want to tease you with it. If you want to send me a, a you know what, I'll put a link to this file um, in the comments after the video's over. Uh, that way you, you can all have it. I mean, who doesn't need to sanitize, you know? We'll just go ahead and get it out there. Sanitize like everybody else. So, all right. If, again, I'm going to wrap it up. If you guys think of anything after this, um, post in the comments. Or, you know, post in the group, give me a tag, whatever works, and uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Or, um, you know, we'll maybe get some others to chime in. Brooke, if I can't find your answer, um, I'll put it out to a couple other instructors and see if anybody else knows. So, all right. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. I hope everybody has a good night. We'll see you again. Uh, actually, we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, tomorrow our video starts at shoot what time six o'clock mine starts at six o'clock all right see you guys tomorrow bye, bye.